Be Wealthy and Smart, Episode 277. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about Damon John's five principles to become a millionaire. This is a fun article because I love the show Shark Tank. And if you haven't watched the show, I highly encourage you to watch it for its superior business knowledge. And, you know, where else can you watch a billionaire or two or possibly three sometimes give business advice to businesses? And where can you hear them talk about what they value and what they're looking for in business and as investors? So I think it's a fabulous show. I love it. And this article really caught my eye because Damon John was sharing five principles that he thinks can help anyone become a millionaire. And I really liked that. And I wanted to share it with you. So here's the article from CNBC.com. It says, Damon John is nothing if not tenacious. And it's that determination that has allowed the founder of FUBU to take a shoestring budget and wield it to eventually create an urban streetwear brand worth six billion dollars. But the road John traveled en route to become a serial entrepreneur and an investor on the hit ABC show Shark Tank was filled with false starts, being $16,000 in the hole after throwing a party on a boat that few people showed up to, losing the first $800 he ever made to pay for car repairs after a crash, sinking nearly $100,000 into a makeshift factory during FUBU's earliest days while still unsure he could fill his first round of orders. What John learned as he gradually built a billion-dollar clothing line is that sometimes your best work comes when your back is against the wall, a lesson he distilled into his 2016 book, The Power of Broke. In this case, sometimes literally being broke can be the jumpstart an entrepreneur needs. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I think I just mentioned that on another show that I've seen that before where people are down and out, their back is against the wall, and all of a sudden they come out guns blazing and they end up being a business success. I've also seen it with families that are just having children. So when a baby is coming onto the scene, suddenly sometimes that motivates the parents to get going and to create a successful business. Okay, on with the article. It makes you work things out and figure things out and get it done without the tool of money giving you a superficial high. And the article goes on. Today, when he's not considering pitches as the people shark, he's sharing his lessons of business success through a series of online classes called Damon On Demand. But as John will tell you, the key elements of any successful venture haven't changed, even if times have. He calls them his five shark points. And he says they're just as relevant today as they were when he launched FUBU in the 1990s. So here are his five points. Number one. Set goals to know where you're headed. By age 16, John had told himself he'd be a millionaire by age 30, but when he turned 22, he was broke and struggling to make a buck by buying and selling cars. Quote, I didn't know how to properly execute goal setting. It's not just visualizing of a number or a certain age, said John. When the idea for FUBU came along, he decided to reshape the goal he set for himself in high school. Instead of committing to making a million dollars by age 30, John instead made it his goal to outfit the hip-hop culture. Designing a clothing line became less about earning money and more about dedicating himself to a community, one that he thought would turn into future consumers. Quote, my goal became doing the best I can for the company I love. The goal changed to my dedication. I want to dress people and enrich their lives, and in return, I will hopefully be compensated, end quote. All right, that's the end of point one. I just want to say a couple of things here. First of all, he made the decision to become a millionaire because wealth begins in your mind, and it begins with a decision to become wealthy. So he made that decision. That was super important. But number two, he realized that it wasn't all about the money and chasing the money. It was his big why. What was his reason for doing 
what he was doing. And he had to have a big why and he had to have that make sense in his life. And when he decided that it was that he wanted to outfit the hip hop culture, then that was his big why. And that's when he could move forward. So those line up exactly with the same principles that I have found to be true. Number two, his second principle is homework. You still have to do it. After sneaking his way into a menswear conference in Las Vegas, John proudly showed off early prototypes of t-shirts emblazoned with the logo of his budding company, FUBU, an acronym that means for us, by us. Oh, I never knew what that meant. Great. (laughs) Glad to know what FUBU means. I always thought it was something about football. Okay, he secured $300,000 worth of orders, and after his mother took out an equity line on their house in Queens, he took $100,000 to outfit a factory to get production going. Just one problem. He hadn't done any research on what it would cost to start a clothing line and get production going. In the process, he nearly lost his mom's house and ended FUBU before it got off the ground. Knowing what you need to launch a venture is something John stresses to the hopefuls who appear before him on Shark Tank. He has to see that an entrepreneur looking for funding has done their work to know what their market is and who their competitors are, and that they've used that knowledge to not only start driving sales, but also improve on their track record. Quote, I have to see sales and some proof of concept and what they learned when they sold 100 units so they can come back and sell 1,000 units, John said. I need to see somebody at some level where their idea isn't just a theory, because if it's only a theory, then you're using my money as tuition. Well, great point. And I think proof of concept is so important for a business. You've got to have it working on a smaller scale before it can work on a big scale. So ironing out all the bugs while it's small is also a good idea. Number three, adore what you do and successful follow. A true entrepreneur must love what they're doing, a seemingly trite lesson that John said is crucial for any successful entrepreneur. It's passion for a project that will allow a person to push past failures and feeling burned out. It was John's love of his new company that helped him persevere when he was just starting his business. But after three months of running FUBU, he had sold $30 million worth of clothing. Quote, do what you love and success will follow. Money may follow. I can't promise that it will. But money's more likely to follow when you're doing something you love because you'll do it for 10 years or 20 years. Well, I love that too. I think you have to really want to do what you're doing. I think a mistake that people often make is to do things just for money. When things are done just for money, you can burn out, you can get tired of it, you can learn to just detest it. And really, people who do what they love will never get that feeling. They're always going to love what they're doing. It's their passion. It comes from within. They're always going to be interested, fascinated, and want to continue to be in the business and move it forward. So I totally agree that you need to adore what you do. Number four, remember you, not just your business, are a brand. These days, it's easy to manufacture personality using social media, but building a business is as much about how you carry yourself as it is about meeting quarterly sales figures or developing new products. Be transparent and honest about what you want from the business and your employees will follow your example. Quote, be very honest with yourself, especially today with social media. At any given time, your employees can see you. So you have to know what the DNA of the brand is. It only takes your employees two weeks to treat your customers the same way they're being treated. And John's rule is see if you can describe who you are in two to five words. Wow, that's quite the challenge. But I agree, you are your brand and not just your business. So nowadays, so many people are standing behind their company and we know who those people are. And we're buying the people as much as we are the brand. So I think that is very important. And his final point, number five, keep swimming no matter what. John's final shark point makes use of what he calls the power of positive thinking. Even as FUBU grew into a bigger company, he maintained a healthy paranoia about running a clothing company. Quote, I always said fashion brands are hot for five years and then they're gone. But keeping a persevering attitude spurred him to come up with solutions to problems instead of giving up. As John wrote in The Power of Broke, you have to be relentless, nimble, moving ever forward, no matter what. So there you go. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up. We hear that from lots of successful entrepreneurs. 
So I really like his point to persevere no matter what. Don't give up. Never quit. Hang in there because success is often just around that last corner. So I'm going to review his five points again. In summary, number one, set goals to know where you're headed. Number two, homework. You still have to do it. Number three, adore what you do and success will follow. Number four, remember you, not just your business, are a brand. And number five, keep swimming no matter what. I hope you really enjoyed that article. I like Damon John a lot, and I wanted to share this with you because I think he's a lot of fun. I think he has been amazingly successful with his sportswear line and that's inspirational to me. So if you want to be successful, it's important to follow successful people, follow in their footsteps and do the things that they do. And I really liked what Damon John had to say. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and you'll be updated as soon as new podcasts are posted. And I'd love to hear from you. Please leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. I want to hear your thoughts about the show. That is what really makes my day and means a lot to me. If you want to get your net worth moving in the right direction, go on over to my website at lindapjones.com and get your 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth. There are 11 quick, easy things you can do to get your net worth growing faster. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.